Okay, I have a demonstration I want to show you today. It's called the carbide cannon. It involves this stuff, calcium carbide. If you were to look at this stuff, you'd probably think it's like black gravel. Not very interesting. Put it in water, though, and things get interesting. Look at it bubbling away there. What's going on? Well, we have a chunk of calcium carbide, and calcium carbide's formula, CaC2, it's a solid. We dropped it in the water, you know, water, H2O, liquid, and we got these bubbles and a milky white precipitate. Notice how it's turned very cloudy in there. Well, the bubbles were bubbles of a gas called acetylene, C2H2. The G is for gas. And the milky white stuff, calcium hydroxide. It's a precipitate. It's not very soluble in water. What I like best about this reaction is all the reactants and all the products are nice and visible. We can see all four of those things. And the chemists like to take a reaction like this and talk about it on the molecular level. What's going on right here? Well, there's our calcium carbide, made up of calcium carbide units, okay? And, of course, there's water. We all know water is H2O. And now that's just sitting still. They're moving around. The calcium carbide is a solid, so they're vibrating in place. The water's a liquid. But really, we're interested just in one calcium carbide unit and two water molecules. So I'm going to put two in front of the H2O there. And you'll see why in a second. Because I want to explain why this reaction is occurring at a molecular level. For them to react, obviously the molecules have to collide. And I'm not saying they collide just this way. The exact reaction mechanism, the chain of events that leads through this reaction, is not what I'm getting at here. But this represents that. So they collide like that. Bonds break. New bonds form. And look what we've got. Those are our products, the acetylene, C2H2, and the calcium hydroxide. These are the bubbles. This is what makes the milky white, OK? But that's what I'm talking about. There's before, and there's after. That's what a balanced equation is all about. It's a story, before and after. Well, that's all well and good. But the neat thing is, let's take a further look at this acetylene gas, OK? I've got a second beaker here. I'll put some fresh calcium carbide in it. And now I'm going to take that acetylene gas and do a completely second reaction with it involving fire. Look at that. Fire on top of water. What's that all about? Well, calcium carbide and water make acetylene gas, and acetylene is combustible. It's flammable. That means it reacts with oxygen. Okay? Here's my dramatization of that. Poof! As long as the bubble keeps going, we get some fire going on here. So, there's the reaction. Acetylene reacts with oxygen gas. Oxygen's O2. It's diatomic. Now, to balance this equation, it's going to take more than just a simple ratio. It's between two acetylene molecules and a total of, that's right, five oxygens. Check this out. When those seven molecules all collide, and again, I'm not, this is an oversimplification. This is not the true reaction mechanism, but if you allow this, boom! Look what I get out of it, a total of six new molecules. Four carbon dioxide, we're familiar with those, and two water, we've seen those before. So my balanced equation looks like that, okay? Again, before and afterward. It's a story about those atoms and how they break old bonds and make new ones, okay? Now, that's all well and good, that was impressive, but that wasn't really an explosion, and we like explosions. For it to be an explosion, that same reaction has to take place inside a confined space. So I'm going to take out, I, I've already weighed these out ahead of time. This is a half a gram of the calcium carbide. I'm going to put it in this bottle. It's got about 100 milliliters of water in there. Add those in there. And now I'm going to take a bandana and shove it down in there. Mm. There's my confined space. That was a half a gram. Two and a half grams. That's five times as much I'm going to put in this second bottle quickly put a bandana in there before that acetylene has much chance to escape. Now, there is a hole in the side of each one of these, okay? And you'll see the reason for that in a bit. In the meantime, let me explain that when these butane lighters run out of butane, you can't do any that anymore, but you can certainly still spark it. There's a piezo crystal in there that you can keep on compressing. And I stuck a pair of speaker wires down in there. So now, when I pull this, it makes a little spark at the end there. This will enable me to, to 
spark my mixtures in here through that hole, okay? This is potentially loud. We'll do the half gram one first. So I'm going to use some ear protection. You all need to cover your ears like this, okay? But I can't do that because I'll have to have a hand free. So I'm going to go like this, okay? So I'm going to do the one, two, three warning, okay? Here we go. Let me put it in the hole there. And one, two, three. Whoa! That was quite a reaction, okay? That was loud, but now I'm going to show you what happens with five times as much. For that, I'm stepping up the ear protection right here, okay? We're going for double ear protection, okay? Here we go. There's the hole. Count of, count of three, ready? One, two, three. What goes on? <laughs> it's a dud. Well, actually, that did just what it was supposed to do. Chemicals always do just what they're supposed to do. Um, why did that happen? Well, let's see if we can explain it. Let me move this out of the way here a bit. This is our first bottle in which I just put about a half a gram of calcium carbide in there. It bubbled away, produced a good amount of acetylene, not too much. And of course, yeah, some of the oxygen gets pushed out of the way in the meantime. But look what I have left in the bottle then. A pretty good mixture of acetylene and oxygen. Mm, maybe close to the two to five ratio. It doesn't have to be exact, but this represents an explosive mixture. Something close to that ratio will give us an explosive mixture. And I brought in the uh, sparker, pulled the trigger, boom! Down came the bandana. That was our first bottle. Now the second bottle. I had five times as much calcium carbide in there. So think about it. This reaction was much more vigorous. Lots of bubbling, lots of acetylene. Pushed out a lot of the oxygen. Not all of it. I'm sure there was still some oxygen left out. And by the way, I imagine some acetylene escaped too. This does not come close to the stoichiometric ratio, the ratio in which these things want to react, need to react. So, what happens when I went ahead and tried to spark this? Yeah, that's right, nothing. It wasn't supposed to react because this is not an explosive mixture. So, I guess if there's a moral in this lesson, it would be that. A little is good, more is not always better. Now, I'm gonna show you, let me turn off the lights and show you what happened when I videotaped this. So here's a videotape of me doing this exact reaction right here. And this is the very first time I tried videotaping it. This is the frame just before I pulled the trigger. I pull the trigger, boom. That happens in like 1 40th of a second. The next frame, the reaction's pretty much over. Except look, there's a blur of a bandana moving up right there. Okay? The bottle is now up in the air. And you might have noticed that I held the bottle so it didn't pop up like that. But this time I wasn't holding it. And I was, I, and look what happened, boom, it pops up. I reached down to grab the bottle, but not in time to catch the bandana. <laughs> of course, I ended up catching on my head instead. So there it is, the carbide cannon.